Hi guys, I'm Sam from the OG of Life and welcome back to my channel and today we are looking at Doctor Survive episode 3 season 6 so just if you're new here little bit of well I'm just gonna go through what, we, what we've been going um, and talking through which so we started off with a really brief history of um, one that we've moved on to the Drive to Survive series um, and the reason that we're doing this is just in order so we can familiarise ourselves with the sport um, and once we get an idea of the sport in general and what the sport is like and what, it, what we expect from this sport or what we see um, we can then look at some of the issues surrounding this sport, so the lack of diversity um, that they have uh, and that obviously that lack of diversity that includes because um, as far as I'm aware there's no LGBT communities in F1, I, I could be wrong um, but there's also not very much diversity when it comes to race or gender so then we're going to move on and we are going to talk about women in motorsports in general um i've got a few women that i plan to do episodes on um however if there's anybody that anyone wants me to do a specific um episode on if you drop their name in the comment then i'll have a look and see what i can do um there's also a, if you are new, I recommend you check out the very first video that I uploaded which was an introductory uh, video to the channel and to myself and there I try my best to outline our sort of goals and everything that we're trying to aim to achieve together as a community. So let's get started with today's actual video. So, like I said, this is the Drive to Survive uh, documentary series that's found on Netflix. So, sorry, seasons. Um, currently, they're working on a fourth season. Um, and we are currently on and going to be talking about episode six. So, this episode starts looking at Pierre Gasly. So, let's just do a little bit, a bit of a recap on him. So, in the very first season, Red Bull's two drivers were Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen. However, Daniel felt like Red Bull were sort of pushing him out, that there was no loyalty to him anymore, even though he had been there um, since he was roughly 18. Um, and he felt as if it was more Team Max and that they that that they pretty much were everything that they did was all to try and get Max to do um win a championship and be the youngest um world championship driver um because they already held this record um with Sebastian Vettel when he drove for them and he was twenty three years old. It's not looking likely um that Max is going to have that title. As the youngest world champion I'm not saying that he's not going to win a world champion but he certainly um it doesn't look like he's going to get the younger one so because daniel had um of changed teams they needed somebody else because you have to have two drivers so they brought in pierre gasly however when they had nine races left in the 2019 or the 2019 race series they decided to get rid of Gasly because he wasn't performing up to their standard. He wasn't getting the results that they wanted. Um, but, you know, he did kind of have... Um, so his confidence was not, but he did go through a little bit of a hard time as well. So they then replaced him with Alex Albon. Who then got replaced for the... Um, 2021 race series um by sergio sergio perez so let's have a look at so this episode that's all about gasly so that's what we're up to now so gasly was still driving in f1 he was driving for um a different team that different team i think i believe is now called alpha tori that wasn't the name to begin with um 
but it's not uncommon for them to change the names but it's still part of um red bull um in in a way i'm not quite sure how it works but so Gasly's confidence, it grew in 2020 because he was actually doing pretty well um, and he was getting really good results. Um, there was a time where he was actually um, doing better than Alex, um, which must have been a big one finger up a Red Bull, um, especially on Gasly's part. You know, so Alpha Toro is or was considered an F1 school for Red Bull and the racers don't see their future with that particular team because they feel as if it's like a stepping stone so they get into F1 into this team however they then opt to you know drive to somebody else as quickly as they can um so yeah, so the reason that they don't see their future with that team is because it's per perceived to be a way to show your worth to Red Bull. So the ultimate goal is if you get into that stepping stone with them into Formula 1 in the first place, then the ultimate goal would be then to move on to Red Bull. I don't quite get what all this... Um, jazz is with red bull i don't get why anybody really wants to go there why it's such a, a popular team um but this documentary series focuses quite heavy on them so there must be something there that people like i personally don't quite understand what that is because from from what i can understand and i can gather from what i've seen that team isn't run very well it's not run like a team um and they treat the people especially the drivers if they're not their favorite driver um uh, quite poorly and they do quite to push people out and they do show favoritism um so i don't understand why anybody would want to drive for them but um that's just me personally so Red Bull then they turned around because the press kept asking them questions because Gasly was doing extremely better and you know they were questioning Red Bull if whether or not they felt as if maybe they, they made the wrong decision um from demoting him basically um and they just turned around and their response was that they were monitoring him and they would potentially give him a shot which still hasn't happened um and so Gasly uh, also a bit of a recap in season two unfortunately there was an f2 race that happened um, and there was a really bad crash that led to one of the drivers unfortunately um dying at the the scene and this driver was Gasly's friend so Gasly felt that he owned it to his late friend to prove to everybody that they were wrong in their decision to remove him from red bull so Gasly, uh, in one race, he gained four places, finishing eighth place. Um, and he won driver of the day on that particular race um, because for each race, the public and the spectators at home, they get the opportunity to vote um, who they think it was the best driver or of that race for that particular day so they get like race driver of the day um, and i think i believe you can vote during the race as well and then there's like a period after as well and um, alex finished sixth so he was only he only had two positions up on gasly remember alex is the one that replaced gasly and max was third so the next race, Gasly made it to third position. So that was the Italian Grand Prix. Um, and Gasly also ended up in first as Lewis had a 10 second stop and go penalty. Um, and for and it was it was basically for going into the pit lane apparently when it was closed. I don't quite understand the rules <laughs> myself. Um, because the, the the sport and the rules and everything that 
goes around it is so vastly complicated um, that it, it was really hard to to find out what the rules are and getting your head around it but there are plenty of videos on youtube that dedicate their time to looking at the rules and how f1 works if you're a new and upcoming fan and so gassi actually won the italian grand prix oh yeah back in 2020 so this must have been a uh, quite devastating for red bull um I don't think they're ever going to admit that maybe they did make the wrong decision from getting rid of Pierre when they did um, instead of leaving it him until maybe this is the end of the season because you can, from what I can gather, contracts are negotiated whenever, you know, whenever they feel like they have time. So, you know, some contracts are, are negotiated during the racing season and some are during the off season um but yeah there's not really any rules to say when you can um discuss your contracts and sign um future contracts or anything like that so yeah i don't think they're ever going to admit that they, may they maybe made a mistake for not really giving him a chance because like i said even alex um I believe he's not even racing in the 2021 season because he didn't manage to sustain a seat um, because I, th I believe, and it might be mentioned further on in this, that Alex wasn't aware that he um, was being replaced. Um, yeah, I think it, it took a lot of fans um, by shock. I mean, I'm certainly shocked that they replaced Alex um, and that they replaced it with Sergio. Not that Sergio isn't a good driver, um, but he wouldn't have been my first guess with who that they were going to replace Alex with um, if they were going to if they knew that they were going to replace him in the first place. So that's all i have for today on that episode so the next video we're going to be looking at the drive to survive series three episode seven don't forget that there's 10 episodes in every season and we're going to break them down and have a little bit of a conversation and discussion about them and i say we're going to have a discussion about them i'm just gonna uh give you a summary of what happens in that uh episode you can obviously go and check out all these on netflix if you have netflix or you have access to netflix um and it'd be really nice to hear from you guys um start off a discussion in the comments but be respectful and nice to one another uh we don't want any trolls or haters if possible um if you've enjoyed this video or any of the content that i have shared in the past and you haven't already subscribed then you still have an opportunity to subscribe so here'll be my face so you can click on my face down here and that will mean that you've subscribed um if you can click that notification bell you will be notified every wednesday and saturday at the moment when i upload a video and share with your friends that would be awesome and if you want to know any more um formula one content that i have covered then there'll be a playlist down here and you can click on that and you can browse at your leisure at all the f1 content that i have produced so far and i will see you in the next video bye